opened up a little bit, even in authoritarian regimes, and that's basically what she's exploring in her thesis. It was a long, long process, going back to the sketching tables, figuring out how to get data, how to measure any of that, given some of the limitations that we are trying to draw information out of China. Um, but thankfully, she's doing this by me, and so that helps a little bit.
platform, this is something that's going to expand the media space and allow more people to engage online. Um, any sort of censorships or laws or regulations that are put in place by the Chinese <coughs> government, this is something that's going to contract the space and really inhibit uh, or prohibit the mm -hmm. free movement and activity online. For contestation, um, if anybody's unfamiliar with this term, it's essentially um, any sort of activism wrapped up into this greater thing that has more long-standing implications. So they're fuller campaigns. They're not just uh, spur rallies or, or anything like that. So what I'm looking here is um, at specific activities that the NGO has sponsored. A lot of them are annual events. Um, and then for my policy reform, I'm drawing from government reports, um, uh, including white papers, uh, the five-year plans, and strategically talk a little bit about this variable of media space. Um, this is not something that's been totally explored in literature yet. So unfortunately, I was not able to find a nice timeline all, on, all already produced online. I had to go through over 50 different sources, both in English and Chinese, to kind of gauge what has happened in China in regards to the media space. So this is just a couple events to highlight, and I'll go into a little bit. But basically what I wanted to display is in 1993, the internet was created. since then 
NGOs. Um, in terms of the contraction and expansion periods of media, uh, what I'm predicting their activity is going to be like. So when the media space is constricted, I'm hypothesizing that so their contestation levels will be lower because they don't have that mobility and because they're not able to come out the restrictions of the government. And because their contestation levels are lower, the policy reform is lower as well. We're not seeing much government response <coughs> as well. And then inversely, when it's expanded, when they have more mobility, their contestation increases, and so does the policy reform on the part of the Chinese government. So for my findings with the first NGO, um, this is a, a visual representation of their major campaigns that they underwent. Um, so you can see here that I divided it into three phases to kind of talk through. So in this first period of contraction, um, you can see that their campaigns are fairly low. Um, in terms of their other social media presence, they had newsletters since 1995, but it was in a very low amount not frequent or uh, regularly published. Uh, when we get to phase two, you can see that it's only one campaign, but this actually is a very major campaign still. You can see from the years um, how substantial it is. And this, at this time, they're beginning to increase their frequency of newsletters, um, still not anything crazy, and they're beginning to open other branches of their NGO. So it shows a little bit more of an increase in activity. Once we get to this third period, though, is when the NGO really takes off. Um, so. their 
legal action. And then when we get to the third phase, um, you can again see uh, a pretty good amount of campaigns going on. Their newsletters have gone up for two per month. It was very, very minimal, if any, um, in the pre previous two phases. But in this last phase, uh, they are publishing two newsletters a month, and they're getting between 15,000, 1,500 and 2,000 views. And their online social media specifically campaign is very, Does have 